In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how we can get the color sensor working on our Lego Spike Prime robots using Python code. Now our color sensor will look something like this. You should have one of those in your kit and it's able to detect three things. It's able to detect a range of different colors. It's also able to pick up reflections and also natural light. Uh, when you actually turn it on by plugging it into your robot and then flicking your robot on, a light is emitted from this front section here of the color sensor as well. So it looks like a little torch once it's plugged in and running. Um, so the thing that we're going to be looking at today are the colors that the sensor can detect. And there's actually nine different color situations that it's able to detect. And here they are just here. We've got the color violet and then blue, cyan, green, yellow, red, white and black as the eight different colors it can see. And this last one here is natural light. So it can also pick up when no color is being sensed. And that's going to come in handy for a future tutorial. So I won't explain it now, but I will in a future tutorial. Okay, and just one final thing is when the robot is looking for these colors, it doesn't have to be an exact shade of these colors as well. So for example, if you're searching for the color green, it could be a light green, it could be a dark green, it could be somewhere in between. It won't matter, the robot is not too fussy there. So it can pick up various shades of each of these colors. All right, so in today's video, what we're going to be looking at is getting our robot to drive around on the ground and look for something that's colored red. Now, when it spots the color red beneath it, where the color sensor is pointing, it's going to have our robot spin around on the spot in a circle and then play a little jingle, which is just a little sound to say that it has found something red. All right, so to get started on this tutorial, jump on over to your Lego Education Spike app and make yourself a new project. Project name could be identifying a color. And we're going to be using Python code to code this up today. So you can click on create once you've got those things done. Minimize your console and your knowledge base and delete all the code that is already in there. And don't forget to connect your robot to your computer by pressing that button at the top there and either connecting via Bluetooth or with the white USB cable in your kit, which is how I'm connected to my robot at the moment. Once you've done all those things, you are ready to start coding. So as always, let's start by writing in line number one from Spike, import motor pair. That's the first thing. But it's not only the motor pair that we're going to be importing today. There's actually um, three other things we need to import. First one is the Prime Hub, spelled with a capital P and a capital H. The Prime Hub is just giving us access to the functions that control the hub itself. So that's the yellow brains of your robot. We also want access to the speaker, which is built into the hub. And we also want access to the color sensor, making sure you spell color the American way. There's no U in color sensor there. All right. So they are the four different things we are importing today. The motor pair to control the wheels. We've got the prime hub, which will control the hub itself, the brains of the um, robot. We want access to the speaker that's built into the hub. And we also want um, access to the functions that control the color sensor. All right, so once you have imported those things, it is time to initialize them, which means set them up. So let's start with the movement motors like we usually do. So we'll do movement motors equals motor pair and then just tell the computer which ports your movement motors are plugged into. So it's B and A for me. And then I'm going to set the speed up for them. So movement motors dot set default speed and I'm going to set it to 50% for this tutorial. Now the next thing we're going to do is something new. We're going to um, gain access to the hub. So we need to come up with a name for the hub. I think the name hub would be pretty meaningful. So let's go with that. Now we're going to write hub equals. And now we need to just um, write prime hub bracket bracket. That's all we need to do to set the hub up. And last of all, we need to get the color sensor set up. So I'm going to give the color sensor the name color 
Okay, this is going to probably be a little bit confusing as we go on, but I'm spelling color the Australian way now. I can call this color sensor whatever I want, so that's why I'm going to spell it the Australian way. And I'm going to write color equals, and we write color sensor again, so that's coming from up here. Make sure you spell it the American way this time. And we're just going to tell it which port the color sensor is plugged into, so I can see at the top here it's plugged in to port num uh, letter D. So the color is going to be color sensor plugged into port D. And that's basically everything set up there. So instead of, put a com instead of putting a comment next to each of them, I might just put one comment at the top of this section saying initialize the motors and sensors. That'll do. Actually, I might put the hub motors and sensors. That looks better. Okay, so that word initialize just means we're setting them up. Now the next thing we're going to do is get our coding underway to make our robot actually perform the tasks that I mentioned before. So it's going to drive along for forever basically, and every time it spots something red, it is going to stop, spin around, and just play a little jingle. Alright, so let's start by writing movement motors dot start, bracket, bracket. That will just get our robot driving forward. So start driving forward. Actually, I don't even need to write start, so just drive forward. That's what it does. That's a good comment, because it's just going to keep driving forward forever until something happens, until we tell it to stop. Okay, so the only time I want our robot to stop moving is if it spots the color red beneath it with the color sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up our color sensor, which we gave the name color. So let's write color the Australian way. And then we're going to write in a function called wait until color, spelled the American way. This function here, wait until color, means that our code's going to keep running until it spots a color with the color sensor, and that color is going to be red today. Now when it spots the color red, our next line of code will tell the robot what to do, and we're simply going to make him stop to begin with, so movement motors dot stop bracket bracket. Okay, so that stop function there will just stop our robot from moving anywhere. And the next line of code oops, is just going to tell the robot to spin around on the spot. So do a couple of spin turns just to do a little dance basically when it spots the color red. So we write in movement underscore motors and then dot move tank. Remember move tank is going to help us um, add different amounts of power to each of the wheel motors. So our movement motors dot move tank, we want it to move for 65 centimeters. And the left motor speed is going to be set to 100. And the right motor speed is going to be set to minus 100. And that should get our robot simply spinning on the spot. Oops, I forgot to close that bracket off in the right place. Alright, so that's looking pretty good now. The final thing I want to do is I want to play a little jingle, which is a um, little sound once we have spotted the color red as well and we've done our little dance. So I'm going to put in a comment here that says play a little jingle. Now it's a bit boring our jingle, but what we can do is we can tell the hub to play different notes, musical notes that is, um, and we have to specify which notes it needs to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access the hub first of all, which is up here. So I'll write the word hub, and then I'll write dot speaker, which we've got access to over here. So hub dot speaker, and then dot beep. Okay, this beep function here is basically um, a little bit of code that's going to tell the robot to play a beep sound out of its hub. Now when it plays that beep sound, we need to get inside the brackets here and tell it which note to play and for how long to play that note. So we're going to start with note 60 and make him play it for 0 0.5 seconds. Now note number 60, if you're musically um, inclined or musically trained, you might know what the middle C note is. That's the middle key on a keyboard or a piano. And note number 60 is that middle C. So what we're going to do is play the middle C note for half a second. 
Okay, that's a pretty good comment for that one. Now, once we played that one beep for half a second, we're going to play another beep. Now, this next beep is just going to go up a little bit higher in pitch, so it's still going to be the same sort of code, so hub.speaker.beep. This time, though, instead of playing note 60, which is the middle C, we're going to go to note 65 and play it for half a second. And then finally, we're just going to do hub.speaker.beep, um, and this time we're going to do note number 70 for 0 0.5 seconds as well. And we'll just be a comment saying plain note 70 for half a second. Now before I test this, I better quickly add some comments up here that I missed before. So we're just, um, we've got the wait until color red. We're going to wait until the robot senses the color red. When he does, we just stop our robot moving. All right, so that is pretty much it. So I think it is time to go and test it. We better just quickly go over it, make sure we've got everything right. So we know the top bit's all good because we just import our different um, modules that we need to make our program work. And we also initialize the hub, the motors, and the sensors to make sure they're all set up and ready to go. It's this section down here that we need to play pay the most attention to, which is the proper coding, getting our robot to do stuff. So when we run our program, the robot is going to start moving forward. That's the start function there doing that. Then when it comes across the color red, so when our sensor spots the color red beneath it, we are going to stop moving and then spin on the spot using the move tank function. Once we finish spinning on the spot for a couple of uh, 360 turns, we are going to play a little jingle, which is going to be three notes, starting at middle C, which is note 60, then going up by five, and then up by another five. We're going to play each of those three notes for half a second each. So it's probably time to just plug in and give it a test run to make sure it all works. All right, so I've just tested mine and that worked uh, pretty well. So hopefully yours did as well. So that is how you can get your robot to sense a single color. And once it spots that single color, it will stop and that's the end of our program. But what if we wanted to make our robot continually search for the color red? So it might spot uh, one little section of red and then we can tell it to keep on driving and go looking again for some other sections of red. Okay, what we're going to need to do to do that is create an endless loop. So we want to repeat some code basically over and over again forever. And that section is this bottom section here. Okay, so you might remember from previous videos we had to put in a line of code that was called while true. This line of code creates an endless loop. And what we need to do underneath while true is highlight all the code we want to repeat forever. And then press tab on your keyboard to indent it, which pushes it across to the right a little bit. And you get a little space before each of those lines. That way the computer knows that these lines of code, the ones that have been indented underneath this while true, they're the ones that we need to repeat forever and ever, basically. So the final thing that we are going to do now um, before we test this is just go down to the bottom of our code. We've got one more line to add in. Um, so it's once we have played our little jingle, the next thing we need to do is just tell our robot to move forward off the first little red patch um, that it has found. So we need to access our movement motors and do the dot move function and we're going to move say 30 centimeters and that ought to do us if we put in a comment in there we'll just say move the robot off the patch of red that it just found okay if you didn't put that line of code in what it would do is it would find the first patch of red do its little dance and play a little sound and then it would get stuck on that color red so we've got to actually tell it to move off the color red and that way the code can then repeat back around here and start driving forward again and looking for um, a new patch of red. All right, so that's basically it. Let's give this code a test run. I'll zoom out so you can see it all nice and clearly. 
So make sure you've got the same code as me there. Give it a test run and we'll see what happens. All right, so that code was looking um, pretty good. Everything seemed to work just fine. The only thing that you might have noticed uh, that was a bit of an issue, it's not a major one though, is after this last line of code, so after he moves 30 centimeters off the patch of red that he's just found, you'll notice that it does a little jitter as it moves around and starts repeating that code again. Okay, and there's nothing we can do about that. So as your robot does move that 30 centimeters and then loops back around, it will just stop for a very split second and then start carrying on with the code all over again. Okay, so don't worry about that. Besides that little jitter, I think everything else is working just fine. So in the next video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to find a range of different colors. So instead of just looking for the color red, we're going to be searching for multiple different colors all at once. And um, that's basically it. So I'll catch you in that video tutorial.